We're asked to complete the following integral, and you're probably doing this question within a section on partial fractions, but strangely, we'll see that we don't need to use any of the techniques of partial fractions. What we're going to actually do is strategically rewrite the integral, specifically the numerator. So we're going to start by changing x plus 8 into x plus 5 and then plus 3. Now perhaps that seems like a random selection, but we will see in a couple of minutes why that choice is very strategic. The next thing we're going to do is to kind of split the numerator up into two. So we all know that if we have a fraction such as a plus b over c, we can rewrite that as a over c plus b over c. So we can treat this x plus five as our a, this would be our b, and then the entire denominator would be our c. So following this little split up rule, we would have our x plus five over x squared plus 10x plus 29 dx plus another integral of three over x squared plus 10x plus 29 dx. So we're gonna evaluate these two integrals and it turns out that the first one is a basic u substitution. So if we let u equal the denominator, x squared plus 10x plus 29, and then if we differentiate both sides with respect to x, so the derivative over here on the right side would be 2x plus 10, and then I like to solve it for dx, so I would divide both sides by 2x plus 10, and then I have the equation solved for dx. Then I would have an integral of x plus 5 all over my new denominator, which will be u, times my new dx, which is du over. Now, the 2x plus 10 can be rewritten as 2 times x plus 5. This was the reason why we decided to keep an x plus 5 in the numerator, because these will cancel out. So a bit of foresight was required on our parts. And then to continue integrating, we can see that we have a factor of 1 half that we can remove to the outside of the integral, and then we're left with 1 over u du. Now we all know that when we integrate this, we're going to get one half times the natural log of the absolute value of our u, and our u was this quadratic right here. So that completes the first of two integrals. Now we have to evaluate the other integral, and then when we're done, we can just add these back together. So the other integral was this three over that denominator, and it turns out that we're gonna to need to complete the square in order to figure out this integral. Now to complete the square, we all recall that we take the coefficient of x and we do two things to it. We divide it by two and then we square it basically. So if we take 10 and divide that by two, we're going to get five and then we square that, we get 25. So 25 is a bit of a little magic number here that we're gonna be using. We'll have x squared plus 10x. Then we'll put in that magic number plus 25. And then we have the plus 29 but when completing the square, if you add a 25 into the problem, you have to subtract a 25 as well. That will maintain an equivalent expression. And so what happens is this becomes a factorable expression. That is x plus 5 times x plus 5, which can be rewritten as just x plus 5 squared. And then you can combine these, of course, to make plus 4. So far, so good. Let's factor out the 3. This will leave us with 1 over that denominator. Then we're gonna to have to pull off another little u substitution, a simpler one, u will equal x plus five. We'll differentiate both sides of that to get du is equal to dx. So now we have a different integral. We have three times the integral of one over u squared plus four, and then the dx becomes du. Now, perhaps we are all aware of a shortcut integration rule for this type of expression here. In a table of integrals, you've probably seen that the integral of one over, and then they'll probably write it as u squared plus a squared du. This happens to equal one over a times the arc tangent of u over a. Now in our case, the, the a is actually two because what we do is we take the four that we had right there and we rewrite that as two squared. So the value of our a is actually going to be two. So when we evaluate our integral using that rule, we'll have three times one over the a value of two, and then the arc tangent of our u also over two. Now we can multiply those two together to make three halves, 
So that'll clean that up. And then we recall that u was x plus 5. So we just go back and change this u up here to our x plus 5. That would complete that integral. And now to get the final answer, we just add the first integral to the second integral and then include our constant of integration. What was strange, again, is we didn't actually need to use the techniques of partial fractions. So why this problem was presented in this section is a bit of a mystery, but there is your final answer.